my friends welcome back to this channel as I do not have as much time to do videos I'm gonna do one and good how many times uh, we say that is not the quantity that matters but what quality let's do a video about um, the favorite uh, man on this channel Jonathan Rune Jonathan Rumi this time went to an event organized by Gisera Catholic High School. This event was called the Adelante Fest. Adelante Fest 2024. He was a guest speaker there and uh, a long interview, more than one hour, on this channel. Let's uh, highlight this channel because we're gonna use a, a fragment, just a fragment for all the video, for all the interview. Actually, watch all the event, not just the interview with Jonathan Rumi. It's interesting and deserves your attention. So this is the channel. Let's let's underline and uh, go visit them, subscribe to them. They have only 1.22k subscribers, they deserve way more than that. So this is G Sierra Catholic High School YouTube channel. If it happens that you are from the same faith, take a look. Oh not hurt. I underline them because I use this video from their channel. And what's fair, it's fair. I'm going to use only 20, about 20, 25 minutes from the interview for all of it. Again, go to this channel and take a look. So, uh, Jonathan speaking about the chosen, of course. Jonathan speaking more importantly about Jesus, about his faith, about the moment in which he surrounded everything to God. Something that all of us we should do, regardless, as I said many times, of our denomination. If you feel that you identify with a certain denomination, I think this is a very good example, isn't it? But what if you are identify with Jesus alone and not with that denomination? There are Christians, like myself, that we don't like to be called in a certain way. Some are Catholic, some are Baptist, some are... I don't know, Pentecostals, um, Lutherans, Presbyterians, Independent Baptists, the too many names under the sun, too many, but the only name that matters is the name of the one that died for us on the cross, Jesus Christ, the only name that matters. He has patience with us, he understands us. He calls us to live a life that is holy, that honors Him. But when we're down in the gutter, He, with love, picks us up from there. And we can always find a new beginning with Him. Because He's not a man. He's not judging us. He understands us. There is still time of grace. And if you, my friend, that you are watching, you don't have yet that powerful relationship with God, that doesn't mean a perf perfect relationship. You're not going to have this in this broken reality. But if you do not have just yet that powerful relationship with God, now it's your time. Now it's your time. So let's take a three, two, one, go. You need a year of the Lord's favor. And I cannot save you. The Spirit of God is not a spectacle, it's an encounter, and I do what the Spirit leads me to do. This is strengthening you. You should be proud just to be a part of this movement. Without me, there is no movement. I am the law of Moses. People tell me I'm trying to look like Jesus or something, and. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather look like. <laughs> this is the happiest you will be for quite some time. Oh my god. Cool cape. I painted it myself. You've got to meet my dad. <laughs> Far out. 
he into hippies? Nope. We can only walk through doors open to us. And your church? Well, that's a door that's shut. My daughter. I'm no one's daughter anymore. Yes, you are. There is hope for you here. I really appreciate you coming over today. I'm not here for vengeance. I'm here for salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Jonathan Rumi. Thanks, guys. What a beautiful night, huh? Give it up for Jay Sarah. All right, Jonathan. So we have we have a special treat because we got now time to sit down and hear about the life of Jonathan Rumi and all that went into The Chosen and so much more. Fantastic. All right. Hope you guys so got some time. This is coffee with Jonathan. <laughs> with that, with water with Jonathan, because it's late. All right, where's the wine, actually? And we'll, we'll do Tonight that we turned it into coffee, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Preferably decaf, because it's Jonathan? getting late. I mean. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's start. Should we start from the beginning? If you like. It's always a good place to start. In the beginning, God <laughs> created... I mean, you were there? I wasn't there, but Jesus was. <laughs> all, right, all right, no, in, in, all, in all realness here, tell us, about, tell us about your childhood. Were you, did you think you would get into acting as a kid? Were you, wa were you wanting to be an actor? Well, doctor, um, it all started. Uh, <clears throat> um, no, I had no intention of being an actor as a child. I, 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 uh, I still have a fondness for gazing up at the stars. I thought maybe I'd be an astronaut. Like when I was a little kid, I thought, oh man, I would love to be an astronaut. And then I realized I wasn't great at math or science. So kind of worked against me there. Um, but what I was good at, I found, was, was the arts. And so I excelled in uh, visual arts mainly and also mus music. And um, I, uh, I, I was an artist most of uh, high school, and I played in every conceivable um, iteration of a musical group that was possible, except chorus. I didn't really sing, but I, I'm a drummer and a percussionist, and so I did marching band, uh, jazz band, uh, orchestra, concert band, um, you name it. I was involved in music, and then I would, um, I would do uh, uh, commission pieces of uh, artwork. I had some stuff exhibited in some um, in one of the local museums in Long Island, and, and uh, so I, I thought I would become a visual artist for sure. Uh, and then on the side, just for my own fun and engagement, I would just and uh, you know trying to make myself laugh. I would uh, I had a knack uh, pension for for um, impressions and voices and stuff, and so I do character voices and things like that. And I thought, oh, you. I think if I was to do any kind of job in the arts using my voice or acting, it would have been voiceover. Like, like doing a voice for The Simpsons was like my fantasy job. So okay, we we gotta we gotta ask then. Why what? you little? <laughs> my Homer Simpson. That's good. G give us another one. What, well, you see, when I when when being put on the spot and told to act on command okay. that's kind of when i that wasn't, i just shut that down that wasn't completely. part of the deal okay sorry sorry what was dance the monkey dance <laughs> <laughs> what was the toughest what was the toughest uh voice acting you had to do the toughest voice acting the toughest character oh i don't know uh you know some of the most difficult stuff is actually with the chosen when when you finish filming then you have the what they call the post-production process where they edit the show and sometimes they realize the way that they cut the show the way they edit it they uh certain lines might not have been heard or there was some sort of sound that kind of they didn't realize made some of the 
uh, dialogue inaudible, so we then have to go back into a studio and re-record some of our own dialogue. And sometimes it's to match ourselves, you know, word for word, like basically just um, try to, what's the word now? Um, to, to dub ourselves. And that can be kind of a difficult thing when you're trying to m match the word and the, um, the lip movement and the intention and the emotional uh, engagement in a particular scene, especially if it's like a very intense scene, you have to recreate the, the, uh, the energy that went into uh, producing that scene in the first place and then to do it just with the sound of your voice and try to get it to look and feel the way it looked and felt when you first filmed it, that can be really tricky at times. What was your faith like when you were growing up? Well, I was raised with faith, um, you know, from baptism. I was actually baptized Greek Orthodox, and uh, my father's from the Middle East. Uh, my mother's from Ireland, and so we were baptized in the Orthodox tradition. And then when we left New York City and moved to the suburbs of New York, uh, there weren't really very many options for church. And my dad, being a, a Christian in Egypt, went to, to Catholic school. And so, you know, Monday through Friday, he pretty much practiced Catholicism, and then the weekends is, you know, the faith of the family. So when we moved, uh, and my mother's Roman Catholic, it was not really a big deal to just go down the street to the Catholic Church. It's like, well, we'll just go there. And uh, we just started practicing that way, and it wasn't that different from um, Eastern Orthodoxy for, for us on a, on a practicing level. And I ended up just making my first communion and my confirmation as a Catholic, and it just kind of stuck. And, and uh, luckily also, you know, I had asked much later in my life um, a priest, you know, a Catholic priest, I said, do I, do I have to get baptized again? He's like, no, 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 you're, you're good in that department. We're, we're, we recognize it. It's fine. You're, you're covered. So I said, sweet. Wait, that's nice. One, one and done, right? One and done. All right, so when you were growing up and you were starting to, when you were starting your career, I should say, but did your faith play a role in the kind of projects that you would pick? No, I, I always kind of kept my faith separate and private and personal and, um, you know, you, you didn't really integrate faith and profession specifically in, in my business. So I, n I never saw a model of it. I didn't know anybody. Um, the internet wasn't quite where it is today where you could just see inspirational videos at the click of a key. So um, what you learned was that yeah, you keep your faith private. You know, your, your, your um, career is, is public. It's, you know, so I, I, never, I never really shared my faith in, in an, or related it even to, to my um, profession in any way. Did you ever feel when you were starting your work as an actor, starting with voice acting and then as an actor, there was any conflict between your faith and your work? No, because I never picked any projects or worked on anything that I felt was, you know, morally challenging in that way or that compromised my faith in some way. My faith was always important to me and it was the, the center of who I was. Um, I just didn't relate it to my, my professional persona, you know? Um, but I can't say that I, I ever worked on anything, as, as an actor especially, that would have put me in that position. What were some of the first film projects that you, were, you got involved in at the beginning of your career? What did that look like? So when I first started in the industry, uh, when I got out of college, I, I worked in uh, what we call production, you know, behind the scenes. And I made a pretty good living uh, and a career, actually, for about 10 years. I was working as a location scout in New York City. And so as I started to become interested in acting, which started with voiceover, um, I first did work on an animated show for MTV called Celebrity Deathmatch many, many years ago. And then that led to um, a little more comfort and confidence in the idea of like, oh, well, maybe, maybe I could do this. I don't know. 
And so I went, you know, piecemeal. I then started to pursue the idea of working on commercials. And then I started to book commercials. I was like, oh, okay, getting my sea legs, you know. And then, then I would look. Then I did a play in New York, and then I was hooked. I was like, oh man, now I got to do this professionally. I just, what play? You wouldn't know it. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. Do we you've have heard a theater of. group here? Nothing anyone's heard of here. Um, but uh, it was an um, off, 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 off Broadway play uh, <laughs> about a band. It was called Rock Show, and it was about a band. Um, and it took place on the evening of this band's <coughs> CD release party when <laughs> CDs were a thing. Got it. One of those My shows. My gosh, okay. I'm <laughs> terribly dating myself now. MP3 release party. So that's. That's what it was, totes. Um, <laughs> MySpace? And uh, yeah, let's not talk about that. Okay. Um, and so uh, I got to play a drummer in this band, and I got to sing in the context of a rock band, and we would actually gig as a band in character around Manhattan, around New York, and it was awesome. And that experience really um, changed my, my life you know, direction professionally and that I knew that I had to pursue the craft of storytelling as an actor and um, I lost my train of thought so then, then you went to L Los Angeles yeah oh yeah so uh, movies that's what it was um, sorry I got mesmerized by these lights in the front here they're so bright Lots of colors. Uh, so while, as I was a location scout, I was, I was working on these movies as a location scout. After I'd done a play, I was like, okay, this is, I think I want to do this. And so what I would do when I'd be finishing up, so there are different phases of, well, you're in Southern California, you know, who here is in the film industry, television? Anyone? No one. <laughs> Four people. Okay, there we go. Um, so basically there's phases of uh, making a TV show or a movie. Pre-production, production, which is the actual filming, and post-production, which is the editing, getting it ready to be get gotten out into the world. So once we finished the pre-production phase, like as a location scout, finding the locations that movies would use to film the scenes during production, my job as a scout would generally be finished. I'd be on my way, hopefully, to the next job. When I, that would happen, I would have a, a headshot, a photo with a resume with a very like five things on it that I did as an actor up to that point, and I would just leave it with the casting office saying, hey, you know, if you guys are shooting and I'm also an actor, and I kind of knew the people because I was on crew, so they gave me a little more consideration than just some rando just stopping by with a, with a headshot. And I got a few auditions out of that, and uh, I ended up doing a movie called, one of the, the first movies that I did was a, a studio film called Prime, and it was uh, Meryl Streep was in it, and Ben Green, uh, Brian Greenberg rather, and and so that kind of gave me a little bit of latitude to be called in by that casting director for some other things. Then I eventually did like a, a Law and Order, and then I did a couple of soaps, and then by that time I thought, you know what, I, I think, well, the the financial crash hit in 2008, and I thought, you know what, this is a a giant reset, and maybe I really need. To, to think about going where all of the work is kind of generated in the first place, which is Los Angeles. And I had, was there the summer before, and I thought, I'm going to make a move. And then for personal reasons, I had to delay a year, and then finally landed in 2010. And then struggle bust for eight years before I hit The Chosen. So eight years struggle bust, you say, in Los Angeles before The Chosen. That's right. Did you do any parts for with playing our Lord during that time? What was the first time that you played Jesus? So the first time I played Jesus was for a Catholic production company called St. Luke Productions, headed up by a man named Leonardo de Philippus. They did these traveling shows about the saints, and they did this one show um, about St. Faustina. And they needed somebody to play Jesus in the visions that she had. So it would be a singular actress on the stage with a screen behind her and uh, all of her movements were choreographed and there were a, a dozen other characters in the show and those characters were basically projected on the screen so it was timed out that she'd have scenes with people on the screen 
and but it was just her and like a couple of basic set pieces and so for all the scenes of the that represented the visions that saint faustina had of jesus i played jesus in those scenes and that was in like 2013 and then six months later i got an opportunity to an audi to audition for a short film called the two thieves that dallas jenkins was casting for his church's good friday service and uh, in chicago and so i read for the penitent thief and it was a great great short film a 25 minute film you can find it on amazon actually and uh, i read for the penitent thief i thought i had a great audition i'm like man i crushed it i was emotional i was like angry i was like ah oh, and he had a great this char this great character arc and then two days later, I got a call to come read for Jesus, which signaled uh, that I didn't get the role for the penitent thief. And then I looked at the role of Jesus again. I'm like, oh, he's got like five lines. Like there's, and he's on a cross and he's dying. I'm like, there's no, ah, uh, wasn't what I'd hoped. But I just... <laughs> But it was what I needed because the Lord knew what I needed. And um, can I get an amen? And so I thought, well, I love me some Jesus. And I had just played him six months ago watching teleprompters. Like the whole Faustine experience, that was crazy. Like when I think about it, like I, I came in for three days. I had to go to Washington. And there was like... There wasn't any time. They just gave me this script. I'm like, this is, there's a lot of words here. And they're like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. That's just kind of reference, but you're gonna, there's going to be a teleprompter. And just, you just work off of that. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So I just read the words as I'm acting it. Yeah, yeah, it's be, you'll be great. You'll be great. And it turned out fine. Uh, it's not my preferred method Clearly. of working, <laughs> obviously. Um, but it was actually uh, my, a trial run for playing Jesus because it was the first time anybody had ever employed a Middle Eastern accent for the character of Jesus and I thought you know what why don't if I'm gonna play him no, nobody's ever actually played him as a regional Middle Eastern guy with an accent so I'm gonna try that and I did and it was it's it's kind of rough when I look back at some of the footage but it's the bones of what would become the Jesus from the chosen so when I met Dallas I'm like yeah, I played Jesus once before, so this is just kind of cool. I get a couple of days of work in Chicago. They fly me out. I get fed. Who's better than me? So, um, and then that went really well. Uh, we ha we hit a Dallas, and I headed off, and that began what is now ten years of our friendship and working relationship. I did two more short films as Jesus over the next three years. Uh, 2017 was the last short film I did for him and his church. Late 2017, he had his deeper conversion. Early 2018, I had my deeper conversion. And then we met three months later in uh, the fall to, um, to shoot season one. Okay, so I'm really excited to get into The Chosen. We're going to watch clips and hear you share about what it was like to act out those clips. But first, you mentioned you had a reconversion just a few months before connecting with Dallas Jenkins. Yeah. Can you share more about that? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, it, it, this came at a point in my life where I had been struggling, as I said, for eight years. And I pretty much hit financial rock bottom. I, I woke up overdraft, like 80 bucks. Um, and uh, I was, I was, I had enough food to last the day. I was thousands of dollars in debt and I all of the the side hustles that I had going at the time like I did rideshare driving I painted houses I delivered groceries I taught voiceover everything I could to just survive all of a sudden all those opportunities just kind of just once they stopped I would get in my car to, to drive for a few hours and I'd be sitting there for 45 minutes and not a single ride would come through. I'm like, what are you doing to me here? Like, what is going on? It, it, it didn't make sense. And I thought, something is afoot. There must be something else going on here. I don't know what I did wrong. 
And I got to the point where I woke up on this one day and I had n nothing left. I had no other alternatives but to drop to my knees in prayer and cry out to the Lord and surrender everything to him and then say basically, Lord, if you want me to leave the business, if I should be doing something else, if there's some other way or mission you have for my life, you have to let me know what that is because I can't read your mind. I've been praying for the signs. I've been asking for help and I, here I am now and I have enough food for today, but I don't know how I'm going to eat tomorrow, like literally. But I trust you because you are true to your word and you never lie. And I stand on your word today. And so I'm giving everything that I'm struggling with to you. And I did. And I got up off the floor and a weight just gone. I hadn't a care in the world. I had 20 bucks in my pocket. And I thought, I'm going to go have brunch. <laughs> and it's going to be the best brunch I ever did eat. I'm going to enjoy every last morsel. I love brunch. Don't you love brunch? Brunch is the best. And it was the best. And I was out of money. I'm like, now what? <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Can't wait to see what's next. But I didn't worry. I was, I truly surrendered. I had no choice. I was forced to the edge of a cliff and I'm like, oh, it's on you now. So here we go. I came back to my house and I opened up my mailbox just to see what bills were next that I couldn't pay. And instead of seeing bills, I saw four checks that were just staring me in the face. I'm like, what is this? And one of them, I'm like, oh, that's the $50 reimbursement from my church for the passion play for the makeup I bought when I restaged the passion. So that's that. But what are these three guys? And so I took my phone and I turned it on the camera function. I started recording video of me opening these checks. And I just, I, it was basically just like a very personal diary on like, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but this is, this is very unusual. And I just started opening the checks. And each check was bigger than, than the one before it. And I just wept. Because I saw what God did with my surrender. And at the end of that, I had $1,100. Praise the Lord. And then four years later, I put that video in my documentary, Jonathan and Jesus. So if you want to see that moment, go to Amazon Prime or watch that documentary and you'll, you'll see that. I never meant for anyone to see that but me. Just, I filmed it because I had to have proof. So... This was, as I said, a part of the interview. This is a beautiful interview. It doesn't bring as much of a novelty, but the fact that Jonathan is at that fest, <laughs> at that, uh, let's call it again by its name, Adelante Fest. Adelante means straight ahead. This is the direct transliteration of the word straight ahead. Straight ahead. This is the duration of our faith as well. We're not going to the left, to the right, backwards. No, we're going straight ahead. And where is our destination, friends? Heavenly Jerusalem, that's our destination. That's where we're going. We don't belong to this world. So don't attach your heart to anything that this world has to offer. We're just passing through. We have one life only. Let's make sure that we live lives that matters. We're not giving another chance of life here in this reality. Just one life. 
and this time here what is passes by so quick too fast we look in the mirror and um, we see the result of time we're getting old many they get depressed because they get old and they say oh oh look another year I'm older but what if we getting grateful for getting old because others they had their life cut short they didn't have the chance to get older we should be grateful we should um, be thankful and enjoy as much as we can the life here because as I said life here is short Jonathan has been given this chance to make a difference by portraying Jesus in the chosen art. He's an artist. This is his domain. It makes a big difference. He has this power of the mass media outreaching to millions upon millions, hundreds of millions of people. And then comes uh, us me and you, we are simple human beings. A small and significant vlogger, myself. Maybe you think that uh, you as well, that you don't matter, but this is a lie. We might not have such a powerful influence, but we can make a difference as well. The devil is the one that will discourage us. The devil is the one that will whisper to us that oh, you're too much insignificant, or oh, you don't matter, you cannot do anything anyway. Who do you think you are? You're nobody, huh? Oh, people like you are very few anyway. What difference can you make? But then, uh, if we open the pages of the Holy Book, we're gonna see there 12 people, like 12 only, 12 disciples. One decided to betray. You see, uh, free choice was given always and even if we work with the Lord is not guaranteed that we will carry on up to the very end so let's make sure that we are fighting the good fight up to the very end so 12 disciples 11 then Judas wives replaced 12 again and look at the difference that they made why they made such a difference because they were committed heart and soul the Holy Spirit inside of them and they knew that for them just like Apostle Paul said to live is Christ and to die to die oh <laughs> this word uh, is even hard to pronounce isn't it to die is gain why why gain because for us as believers death is not something scary and final on the contrary it's the beginning of a new life the true life that eternity that is opening wide for us eternity friends that's what matters here what we see here with our eyes what we hear what we touch all this beauty that God created for us and we should be more grateful and we should acknowledge more his presence in everything that is around us all this that we see with our eyes is fading away, comparing with uh, what is expecting us there in eternity. Eternity, friends. No beginning, no end. Can you understand that? I said many times, I will repeat. We cannot understand eternity from here, from this part of <laughs> the reality. And here, Everything that uh, surrounds us is faulty, or well, can become faulty. It's an imperfect reality, broken because of the sin. And the world is going farther towards uh, darkness. So if we hear, let's not allow darkness to steal us. Let's carry on in light and let's bring light. And you can make a difference. Doesn't matter you are small and you think you are insignificant. Faithfulness in Christ and we can make a difference. Just like 
Jonathan here. I'll be curious to see what's happening when he will finish The Chosen because The Chosen is already at season 5. <sighs> Next year they will start filming season 6 that is 2025 and most probably in 2026 season 7 and then I'm not sure if Jonathan will be able to carry on playing some spiritual giant <laughs> He played and he plays the son of man, the king of kings and the lord of lords. But after he finishes all this, what he's gonna do? He's aware of this. And now, he's doing uh, everything that he can to bring awareness. About what? To bring awareness about the king. And in the meantime, obviously, he talks about his faith as well. That's again a good reminder for all of us to, to be serious in our own faith, whatever faith you have. And if you're serious and honest in what you do, God will reveal himself to you and he will show you what you need to know. That's the problem in our world. Not a certain faith, but lack of sincerity in that faith. People are not committed really. Yeah. They, um, they want to walk with the world and with the Lord in the same time. A uh, heart divided. And we will realize that we cannot have a heart divided and be efficient in what we do. No? It will be the beginning of uh, an amazing journey with Christ. And the beginning of something... Uh, called a revolution, spiritual revolution. And if in the Western world Christians are struggling to make a difference, well it's because of the lack of genuine surrender. That surrender that says I crucify my flesh with its desires, I carry my cross and follow you, Jesus. May God help us to do just this, to follow God this way. Thank you so much for listening. I had to bring my 50 cents into this as well. God bless you all. Love you all, friends. And, uh, the weekend now is ending. Monday starts. If you had this blessing and you rested this weekend, good for you. Some of us how to work this weekend. May you walk with God every day. And no matter what day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if you work with Jesus, you'll be more than a conqueror. Thank you for listening, friends.